Hi, this is Bob again with video number 8 in my YouTube video series on how to calculate percent error. First thing we need to know what percent error is. Now, most quantitative labs, and those are labs that involve numbers and measurements, are graded based upon percent error. That is, the percent which a person's given measurement is wrong off the correct and accepted answer. So basically, how far away you are from what you should be getting as your answer. Now this is an accurate way for a teacher, a teacher's assistant, or a professor to grade because it tests not only calculations, but also how precise and how careful the student was during measurements in the lab. And this is a skill that's very important, not just for uh, your grade and for you in the lab in chemistry, it's also important in life because the more you take your time and worry about how precise you are, the better off you're going to be when it comes to um, being efficient in your job and in anything you do. So examples of types of labs that use percent error, reaction labs especially, reacting two or more substances together and creating a compound. They measure how much product is produced in comparison to how much should be produced. So let's say I should get 100 grams of product and I only get 85. I, I, obviously there's some kind of percent error in there. And there's different reasons that percent error comes about, whether it be faulty um, measurements by the student or even um, not cleaning equipment bad lab conditions, lots of different things contribute to that. Other types of labs that use percent error, calorimetry, which is measuring heat and heat loss. Calorimetry labs, um, you can actually get a very, very high percent error. I one time received a 34,000 percent error in a calorimetry lab, and according to what my teacher graded me on, that was actually a very good number. So calorimetry labs, uh, definitely you can get high percent errors in. Titration labs, are also another type of lab um, where you react acids with bases and you measure how much you need to react based on how, knowing and using a formula on how much you should need and how much you actually need it's the same idea as the reaction labs there's some type of percent error involved there based on many different factors so the formula for calculating percent error is as follows the experimental value which is what you what you get in the lab minus the actual value, which is the ex accepted value, uh, what you should actually get, over the actual value times 100% is going to give you the percent error. Now the key to this, though, is knowing that the first value, okay, experimental value minus actual value over actual value, will never be negative. It is within absolute value brackets, which I couldn't draw in this PowerPoint, but you ha just have to know that you're never going to get a negative value. Okay, so let's look at an example. John performs a reaction in which he is expect, expected to create 50 grams of product. Upon finishing the reaction, however, he only creates 43 grams of product. Calculate his percent error. Okay, so we need to decipher what we have here. He's expected to create 50 grams of product. So this is the actual value. Our experimental value, which is what we got, is 43 grams. So, using the formula, 43 minus 50 experimental minus actual, over actual, so over 50. Now remember, that's an absolute value. So that's time, 7 over 50 is what we end up with there. Times 100% gives us 700% over 50. And when you work that out, you get a 14% error. 